I'm here to discuss some of the great concerns of the Clinton Global Initiative, especially climate change, extreme poverty, and epidemic diseases. But I, I know and hope you'll understand if I begin by addressing a crisis of our own right here in America. A crisis that began not far from here in the financial district of this city. We know this is a crisis with serious implications and consequences for our nation and for the world. History must not record when our nation faced such a moment, its leadership was unable to put aside politics and to focus in a unified way to solve this problem. It's time for everyone to recall that the political process is not an end in itself nor it is it intended to serve those of us who are in the middle of it. In the Senate of the United States, our duty is to serve the people of this country and we can serve them best now by putting politics aside and dealing in a focused, straightforward, bipartisan way with the problem that's at hand. For the Congress, this is one of those moments in history <laughs> when poor decisions made in haste could turn crisis into a far-reaching disaster. If we do not act, credit will dry up with grave consequences for workers and businesses across American economy and beyond. People will no longer be able to buy homes. Their life savings will be at stake. Businesses will not have enough money to pay their employees, and as ever, the greatest burden borne by the American people. $700 billion is a staggering and unprecedented figure, and there should be no misunderstanding about the dimensions of this proposal. $700 billion, for example, could rebuild the crumbling infrastructure in every town, county, and state in this country. A great deal is being asked the American people, and great care must be taken to ensure their protection. As most of you know, I'm an old Navy pilot, and I know when a crisis calls, for all hands on deck. That's the situation in Washington at this very hour, when the whole future of the American economy is in danger. I cannot carry on a campaign as though this dangerous situation had not occurred, or as though a solution were at hand, which it clearly is not. As of this morning, I suspended my political campaign, as you know, with so much on the line for America and the world. The debate that matters most right now is taking place in the United States Capitol. America should be proud of the bipartisanship that we're seeing. It's become clear that no consensus has developed to support the administration's proposal to meet this crisis. I do not believe that the plan on the table will pass as it currently stands, and obviously we are running out of time. So I'm returning to Washington to seek five fundamental improvements to this critical legislation. I've laid out these principles over the past week. First, there must be greater accountability included in this legislation. I've suggested a bipartisan board to provide oversight for the rescue. We won't solve a problem caused by poor oversight with a plan that has no oversight. Never before in the history of our nation has so much power and money been concentrated in the hands of one person. And there must be protections and oversight in place. Second, as a part of that oversight, there must be a path for taxpayers to recover the money that's put into this fund. When we're talking about 700 billion taxpayers' dollars, that money can't simply go back into a black hole of bad debt with no means of recovering any of the funds. 